March the 23rd, 2020. Guys, I've got an update on Comet Atlas that's going to die between Mercury and the Sun here in a few weeks. But let me say this first. Uh, if any of you guys watched the White House briefing today with Trump there, did you notice how he had thinned out the flanks behind him? And uh, Fauci was absent. A couple of other people were absent. But uh, And I, what I saw once they got through reading the information out and actually Trump got to taking questions. We saw that that he had separated the division by not having uh, Tony Falsey there between this uh, new drug that they're going to test in New York and uh, then Falsey's explanation that it really they don't know much about it. But I was impressed with Trump. He had separ again separated and thinned the flank behind him out. And he kind of talked straight to the nation for the first time in several months, in my opinion. And he talked about it was more important to open this country back up than anything else. You got around 500 deaths. Guys, that's nothing compared to the flu. We're approaching 30,000 deaths. Now, we, you know how I feel about that. But I was very pleased, uh, and I've got to say that uh, Trump is doing the right thing, it looks like now. And I'm really glad to see he's not listening to his handlers. And what I think has happened is that uh, not from my I've been pushing for five or six weeks. Look at the numbers and the fatality uh, rate, you know, staying down one or so percent, two percent at the max compared to the flu at seven point one. And so that's what Trump emphasized today. He kind of separated himself from the people whispering in his ear and looked at the numbers himself. And he said he's going to start opening this country back up. And it may be within just a week. He said it's not going to be months like everybody's pushing him to. And remember the other night when, or the other afternoon when he introduced Pompeii as the deep state? Is Trump waking up? Guys, I really hope so. But I've got to... Give him kudos for what he did this afternoon, regardless of some of the other things that I think he was kind of slacking on. It looks like he finally got enough information to see through the BS. That's what I'm hoping, and I think it's a good sign for this country. If you haven't seen it, watch it. But, guys, you're looking at Comet Atlas new images. It's a couple of days old, but uh, this thing is rapidly brightening. And they're saying no one knows how big the icy core of Comet Atlas or C 2019Y4 might be. Now, Atlas is basically the system that discovered it. Possibly it's no wider than a few kilometers, which about is you're talking about about 1.25 miles. But, guys, I think it's a lot larger than this. And uh, we're going to look at the core just a little closer. It says new images from amateur astronomers around the world show that Atlas gaseous envelope has ballooned in diameter to 720,000 kilometers because that's about half as wide as the sun and in this image that would be this the uh, comma is or the outer atmosphere is where you see this green edge so the green edge if you put it up beside the sun would be about half as wide which is huge so definitely, I have no doubt if the comet holds together, it will be very clear to the naked eye. A sign from heaven. This is coming from Michael Yeager out of Austria, and he, every year he's got some of the most amazing photographs, year after year, even back to Ison. But Comet Atlas's comma, atmosphere is approximately 15 arc minutes, not arc seconds, but arc minutes in diameter. He says on, this was on March 18th, so what do we got about five days ago? Its newly formed tail is about the same size, and we're going to look at it a little closer, but let me read this, and that's you can see where the tail is visible about the same size as the comma. It says other astronomers are getting similar results. 15 arc minutes equal a quarter of a degree given comma Atlas's distance of 1.1 AU on March 18th. That's the distance... Um, from the sun that an angle corresponds to a physical size of 720,000 kilometers. Again, that's the outer atmosphere of this thing. On the scale of big things in the solar system, Comet Atlas falls somewhere between the sun 
uh, the diameter of the sun and the diameter of Jupiter. It's not unusual for comets to grow this large while their icy solid cores are typically mere kilometers in diameter. I don't believe there's an icy core to any of these comets. I think they're magnetic and I think they're highly electrical charged. It's like friction as you slide across a carpet. Years and years, hundreds of years sliding through the um, through space through the inner atmosphere and out beyond that the a charge builds up and it, this thing gets closer just like we saw with i sun and uh pan stars the big comets that got close to the sun it started discharging this huge solar blast it was amazing to see and the and the earth was affected by this and they mentioned 2007 comet 70 uh, 17p homes guys it's the most amazing images you've ever seen if you've never seen that this thing exploded but it was like a planned explosion and it was almost like an embryo if you've ne never seen homes uh, you need to uh, check that out but uh, it expanded rapidly as it approached the sun and got as bright as the sun almost but um, this thing is much bigger I think and it said they're saying that uh, it had enormous uh, comet, even larger than the sun. The Great Comet of 1811 also had a sun-sized comma. And so this thing is still out near Mars. As it gets closer, it could become brighter and brighter if the core will hold together. It says whether Comet Atlas will eventually rival those behemoths of the past remains to be seen. Now, tomorrow night, looking north, or tonight, it's going to be close to this, but uh, look north after nightfall, March 24th. Atlas is here. You see the Big Dipper to the right, the Little Dipper to the left, Draco to the bottom. Again, looking north. Right now, Comet Atlas is certainly the biggest green thing in the solar system. Its verdant hue comes from the diatomic carbon C2, a common molecule in comets. Gaseous C2 emits a beautiful green glow in the near vacuum of space guys um space is a type of vacuum but it is not a near vacuum there's so many objects there and different things happening it's just not a vacuum this green color could become visible to the naked eye in mid-april that's not far as comet atlas moves closer to the earth and the sun stay tuned now i want to look at some of the images i enlarged them and kind of did some um, changes on them. I just want to look at the inner core. What I'm talking about in this enlargement and kind of putting some heat into the subject, this red area on the outer edge of this photo of this picture is part of that uh, comma that um, they're, they're talking about. It's half the size of the sun. And if you do the measurements, you've got an inner comma here, and you can see the tail. And then in this bright area here is the center. And uh, then it has kind of an atmosphere of its own. But this thing is could be as much as 50,000 kilometers in size. Because it's about a, a tenth of the width of the entire uh, green glow. And we'll take a look at that a little closer. Now, it's get, as it gets closer, as we did with Comet Ison, we'll be able to look closer into this nuclei. And if these hot spots start to separate, then we'll know that we've got multiple nuclei or multiple um, rocks inside this inner uh, section of the comet. I said this about Ison, if you guys remember. I said this thing has multiple nuclei in the middle. The scientist was telling everybody it's going to hit the sun. I said, no, it's not. It's going to come up beside it, and it's going to shatter into a thousand pieces. It shattered into millions of pieces and put a tail out over 40 million miles wide as it came up on the other side of the sun. Now, there, um, and what they were not talking about, which was amazing to me, if a comet the size of Ison had have actually hit the sun, and they were expecting it to, the devastation, the solar flares, the gravitational changes would have been devastating to our planet and everything in the inner solar system. Now, this one is not coming anywhere near as close to the sun as I sun did. It actually, they thought it was going to hit it. That's how close. But this is going to die between Mercury 
and the sun again what they're saying from the outer edge of the green uh, comma here to here is 720,000 kilometers that's 447,387 miles wide again that's the atmosphere and this intersection not the inner uh, comma here but this intersection here could be about a tenth of that size and that would put it at 72,000 kilometers or 44,000 miles wide that's this intersection but as it gets closer we'll be able to tell again how well it's going to hold together what happens is um, I've seen comets come in over Mars they would be doing about a million miles per day but as they would come in closer it would uh, the speed would elevate to about 11 million miles per day and so once it loops around and gets close to the sun it creates a slingshot effect with extreme g-forces and that's where you get your meteor showers when these comets after hundreds of thousands or millions of years of these large orbits they finally weaken and uh, that's where you get your meteor showers and that's where pass uh in once it gets that close to the sun you may have a scatter shot effect but we'll watch it but guys it looks like at this size it's going to be a spectacular naked eye event we'll be watching it in the next few weeks it's a heads up guys be safe